Ruto and Raila were in the United States of America, as you can see here. Immediately after their US stint, Raila Odinga has decided to go to Paris for a climate change talk. Here are the images. Now Raila left, but President Ruto is still in the United States of America. However, after concluding his duties in America, instead of returning to Kenya, he is going straight to the Democratic Republic of Congo for a high-level meeting organized by the African Development Bank. Now, in this video, I want us to look into why the party leaders of UDA and ODM are all suddenly prolonging their stay outside the country. Because politicians are very crafty and very tactical. This is what I call tactical absence. It is not a coincidence that both of them are not in the country and we want to look into why that is the case. And without wasting any time, Let's get after it. The first reason is to make it appear like they are in no way, shape, or form involved in the impeachment of D.P. Regadi Gashagwa. In fact, Raila is the master of this concept. The day when the president announced Oparanya, Opio Wandai, Joho, John Badi Ngongo, Raila was not in the country. And he misled even some ODM MPs by saying that while he has been out of the country, these are rogue ODM members who have rushed off into government. We saw Kaleb Amisi lecturing the likes of Joho and others, even Babu Wino, by saying these are rogue people. They bought what Raila told them. But Oparanya later on exposed that Raila gave those names and then went on top of a vehicle to say that Ao Walitoroka Kiviao, he didn't give the names. And when Oparanya asked him, Raila told him that I only did that to test the ground, to see how people will receive this information. So that was a blatant lie from Raila. Once again, he is outside the country with President Ruto. I will not be shocked to hear somebody telling us that these are rogue MPs, that Kimani Ishungwa, Junet Mohammed, and all these people are rogue MPs acting on their own, that they seized the opportunity <laughs> in the absence of their party leaders to go and do things which nobody sent them to do. That one, I will not be shocked to hear that narrative. So they are trying to distance themselves from what is happening. You know, even for those who are malicious, the people who organize the murder of others, and maybe they are related. The day wamepangana na the hitman, mutaenda Friday, saa flani, kwa nyumba ya mtu flani. Even if he, the organizer, lives in that house, that day they make sure they are abroad. They had duties in Mombasa, they had duties in South Africa, in uh, Egypt. There's a politician who did that in this country. I don't want to mention him, but... Uh, there is somebody who was playing games with his wife and he left the country to go to another country in South Africa. And when this fellow went to play those games with his wife, he was killed. <laughs> those who are keen on politics, they know who I'm talking about. But those are the things which happen. Now that is exactly what is happening here. Tactical absence as they kill you politically. He, this is what we call political death. Impeachment is political death. The organizers, Wakokando, they are abroad. <laughs> Now, the second reason why uh, the dynamic duo is absent from the country is to avoid blowback from Kenyans. You know, once you are the president of the republic, you cannot go for too long without facing the media. You cannot go for too long without facing the general public. There are a lot of events that the president has to attend. There are a lot of journalists he has to talk to. And these are the types of questions he doesn't want to respond to. Because people will be pressing him, Mr. President, are you aware that your deputy president is being impeached? Mr. President, are you okay with the impeachment of your deputy president and are you doing anything to stop it? Mr. President, who will you pick as your next deputy president if the current one is removed? These are questions the president does not want to face, at least not now. So you can see it is tactical what they are doing. They want to be abroad so that they can avoid such questions. In America, no one is asking him about Rigadi Gashagwa. He did an interview with Aman Po, who is a bad journalist because, let me not say bad, but she didn't get it spot on on this one. The time when she interviewed Uru Kenyatta on CNN, on matters LGBTQ and all that, and then she also asked him about the fallout with his deputy. This time around, she has interviewed uh, President Ruto, 
and she only asked about the abductions. She never asked about his fallout with DP Rigathi Gashagwa. So the president is enjoying that abroad. In America, he's talking about Haiti and what Kenya is doing there. He's talking about Kenya's position in the United Nations uh, Security Council. He wants us to have a seat there. He is living there going to Congo to meet with the African Development Bank to talk matters Africa. Nowhere there is, will there be anything about Rigathi. So that is why the president is ensuring he is not entering this country until the right time. And the right time is when the impeachment has been tabled. All the focus of the media and the MPs and the country is on the National Assembly, not him. Now on this one, Ray Lodinga has nothing to lose. But for the president, I don't understand his tactics. Why would anyone give up the solid numbers of Mlima Kenya to take up the shaky Western Kenya which never votes in one way and Nyanza which only has 2 million votes? It doesn't make much sense, but at the end of the day, history does repeat itself. When Mze Moi was in power, Mlima Kenya was in opposition. In fact, Kibaki was fired as a vice president. Again, during the time of President Ruto, the mountain is likely going to be alienated. Because even if he picks Waiguru or Kindiki, I tend to believe that will be a caretaker deputy president. Because in politics, you don't want a deputy coming from a region which wants nothing to do with you. They'll finish you. You also don't want to marry somebody whose in-laws want nothing to do with you. They will finish that marriage because already it is sabotaged from the ground going up or up going down, no matter which way you look at it. So that will just be a caretaker deputy president so that the president can eventually pick somebody from Western Kenya or another region, which he is sure this region will give me 100%. Whether he puts Kindiki or Waiguru, the days of getting 100% in Blima Kenya are gone. In fact, it's usually 80. Now they might get 35. But at the end of the day, guys, those were some of my reasons why I believe uh, the duo is out of the country. But what say you? Do drop me your own comments in the comment section below. I'll do my best to read them and to give you a response. Now, in the event you're here for the first time, please go on and hit the subscribe button. And if you're watching from a different platform, just head on over to YouTube, search for David Ofula. Hit the subscribe button. You're going to be getting a ton of content of this nature. If politics is something you're passionate about, this is definitely the one channel that you really, really need to subscribe to. All right, guys. Adios. Thank you for choosing David Wafula as your primary news platform. We put countless hours in research, recording, and editing. By showing up each and every day to watch our videos, you encourage us to generate more videos for the viewers. We are on a mission to inform, educate, and build a better tomorrow. To our thousands of followers in a world full of presidents, kings, and queens, you are the real gem. Adios.